Hi everyone. My name is Eric Hayden Campbell. I'm a PhD candidate at Cornell University, advised by Nate Foster. And today I will tell you about Avenir, which was recently presented at NSDI 2021. Avenir is joint work with collaborators at Cornell, Yale, Tehran, the ONF, Intel, and Infosys that applies program synthesis to software-defined networks to manage pipeline diversity in the data plane. Now, a network's purpose is to relay messages across devices to enable communication between physically separated end hosts. In a traditional network, special purpose devices called routers communicate to establish the best, for some definition of best, way of forwarding messages through the network. This is the purpose of the control plane, to compute the best routes on which to forward messages towards their intended targets. With these routes in hand, vendor-provided abstraction code translates these routes into the data plane, which realizes how the messages, i.e. packets of bits, should be forwarded across a variety of possible switch pipelines. The central abstraction for describing data plane pipelines is the match action table, which reads packet values, here, the source IP and destination addresses, and assigns a value to the output port. Here, we match the destination 10.0.0.1 and the source 10.0.1.0, and set the output port to 101. Different routers might implement different data plane pipelines. For example, this two-stage pipeline in beige implements the same forwarding behavior across two sequentially composed match action tables, which we notate using juxtaposition. The first table matches on the IP destination address and sends a te temporary metadata value, which is then matched on along with the IP source address in the second table. Now in this architecture, engineers are oblivious to the pipeline structure on the individual routers. That is, the homogeneous control plane effectively abstracts over the diversity of the pipelines in the data plane so that engineers only have to reason about these high level protocols. However, with the advent of software-defined networking, the story changes. In a software-defined network, the control plane logic is logically centralized and manages a distributed data plane. So these data plane devices now expose their implementation details directly to the controller. So the network engineers need to write special purpose code to reason about the idiosyncratic behavior of each switch. These drivers translate controller-facing abstract operations on an abstract switch into target-specific operations on the target switch. For example, let's say that we have a two-table abstract pipeline where each table sets the output port based on the IP source or destination address, respectively. And we want to map operations on this pipeline to a target two-stage pipeline that first matches on both the source and destination addresses in the L2 table and then sets a metadata field that is subsequently matched on in the aggregation table, ag, to determine the output port. Let's work through the driver code that translates rules in the source table. As an example, we'll insert a rule that sends traffic originating from source 10.0.1.0 out on port 88. First, we compute the metadata that is set in L2 and matched on in the ag table. In this case, we mint an unused value, 47, because there is no row in AG for port 88. Then, we insert into L2 a rule that wildcards the destination and matches on the source address from the abstract program. Here, the star indicates a wildcard match, which says that we don't care about the value of the destination address. Finally, we insert a rule into AG that assigns the port to 88. Now, Writing this code for this single table translation was easy, but managing a collection of drivers quickly becomes tedious. For example, if we swap the order of match keys, store forwarding decisions in two metadata fields or in a single metadata field before making the final forwarding decision, each pipeline structure induces a slightly different driver with its own design, testing, and debugging costs. And writing these drivers won't always be as easy as these simple two-field, two- or three-table examples. There are many challenges in writing these translations in the real world. We've already seen that these translations are not pure functions on operations, but rather depend on the rules already installed, which requires careful state management. Further, real-world pipelines are just on a different scale than these simple examples, comprising dozens of tables, often with intricate dependencies between them. And 
real-world pipelines offer much more complex functionality than just L2, L3 forwarding, features like tunneling, access control, and load balancing. To say nothing of the engineering complexity, recent advancements in switch technology have enabled reprogrammable pipelines. When the data plane can be reprogrammed, the abstract and target programs may change arbitrarily whenever an engineer spots a bug or wants to make an optimization, which means that alongside the P4 program, P4 is the industry standard de facto language for programmable pipelines, alongside the P4 program, engineers also have to co-maintain the drivers at a rapid iteration schedule. And even in the absence of a programmable data plane, fixed function switches are usually underspecified in lengthy English documents, forcing engineers to exert extensive effort to understand the switch behavior and then design, test, and debug the translation drivers. Let me tell you a story about Onos, which is the Open Networking Operating System, which is an industrial controller platform developed by the Open Networking Foundation. The Onus engineers had developed a fully functioning network that ran Broadcom switches Trident and Tomahawk, both of which implemented the OFDPA specification. When they went to introduce the Qmern MX switch, which also purported to implement the OFDPA spec, they found a discrepancy, namely that the ingress port was missing from the match keys in the termination MAC table, which was causing bugs in their network. To fix leaky abstractions like this one, the engineers had to write special purpose code to reason about the Qmern MX switches versus the Trident and Tomahawk switches. The idiosyncrasies in these switches were so great that it took engineers at the ONF two years to certify the Qmern MX switch as production ready. These considerations hinder the flexibility of data planes that real controllers can support. So, to recover the easy support for data plane heterogeneity that we have in traditional networking, we want to develop an engine that supports the automatic translation of control plane operations to reduce the redundant, error-prone, and burdensome code that engineers are required to write. And as secondary goals, we want our engine to be verified to eliminate subtle bugs. And we want our engine to be efficient to avoid prohibitive runtime overheads. To this end, we have developed Avenir, which leverages program synthesis to translate abstract operations on abstract pipelines into equivalent operations on target pipelines in a fully automatic way. Simply pass formal descriptions of the abstract and target programs and Avenir automates the rest. Now, a major challenge with applied formal methods is that formal specifications are hard to write for real world programs. However, Avenir uses predicate transformer semantics to compute efficient logical formulae from imperative data plane programs written in the de facto industry standard for data plane pipeline programming, a language called P4. Now, in the case of devices that are not programmable, so-called fixed function devices, Avenir simply shifts the burden from writing a driver to writing a pipeline specification. And it's not clear if modeling pipelines is actually any easier than writing drivers, but using Avenir does provide the added benefit of formal verification. Since a core part of the synthesis algorithm uses a theorem prover, Z3, to check that the target operations correctly implement the abstract operations. So what does a deployment of Avenir buy us? Avenir interposes between the controller and an individual data plane switch, hiding the specific details from the controller so that supporting a diverse data plane is automatic. So how does Avenir work? Avenir uses counterexample guided inductive synthesis as its central algorithm. First, the verification stage checks where the, whether the abstract operation is already implemented on the target switch, which it is not for the example rule that we saw before. So the verification stage produces a counterexample that witnesses the behavioral discrepancy in this case, identifying packets that have a source address identified in this newly added rule. This counterexample guides the heuristic search to generate a candidate set of operations, which is then passed to the verification stage. And the algorithm continues searching until the heuristic search generates a correct sequence of candidate operations, which are then installed onto the target switch. We prove two correctness theorems about this algorithm. First, we prove soundness which says that if we compute a solution, it correctly realizes the abstract behavior, following classic results by Dijkstra in 1975. We also prove completeness, which says that if a solution exists, Avenir will eventually compute it. 
Now, the proof here follows by the finiteness of the search space of all controller operations, which is really far too large of a space to exhaustively explore. So we need to come up with good heuristics and optimizations to make Avenir scale in the common case. The first optimization is to make Avenir incremental. That is, it only processes a single operation at a time. The justification for this change is domain specific. That is, controllers typically make incremental changes to the target. So we optimize our algorithm for this common case. Formally, we assume that the abstract and target behaviors are equal before each invocation of Avenir, before each operation, which means that any semantic change in the behavior comes from the newly added rule, which allows us to slice away irrelevant rules, use static analysis to determine which target tables we should modify, along with configurable domain-specific heuristics. We also make use of abstracting caches to amortize the cost of our expensive search and verification algorithms. The first abstracting cache is a template cache that heuristically infers the structure from previous translations, such as what tables or actions were used, and reproduces the mapping of keys and actions to produce a candidate solution that is passed to the standard SIGIS algorithm. Recall the source table mapping example from before. The template cache optimistically copies the source address and port value it, and mints new metadata values to link the rows, which completely bypasses the heuristic search scheme. Similarly, the query cache universally quantifies over constants in valid queries. When we conclude that a formula like x equals 5 or not is valid, we also check that for all b, x equals b or not is valid. And if it is, we remember the formula in the query cache so that checking future formula like x equals 47 or not becomes purely syntactic. And these two caches compose to provide a fast path that bypasses the expensive search and verification stages. But how well do these optimizations work? Can we support a broad range of programs efficiently? To demonstrate the flexibility of Avenir's algorithm, we retargeted a workload of 500 Ethernet, 500 IPv4, and one validation operation for a simple L2, L3 invalidation pipeline into a collection of handwritten target pipelines. For example, the early validate pipeline is nearly the same as the abstract pipeline, except that it moves the validation table from the end of the pipeline to the start. The completion graph for this pipeline is shown on the left. The solid line indicates the completion time with cold caches, and the dotted line indicates the completion time with hot caches. There are a few things to notice. First, the cold cache line has a couple of horizontal hiatuses that represent cache misses when Avenir defaults to the standard algorithm, which explains why the hot cache has no hiatuses. There are no cache misses. This pattern is repeated across a diverse set of targets, which lets us conclude that Avenir is able to retarget a single realistic pipeline to a variety of realistic targets, that caches amortize the cost of learning new translation schemes, and that network engineers who are worried about the non-deterministic overheads associated with SIGIS can pre-populate the caches before deployment time. So how well does Avenir scale? To answer this question, we procedurally generated microbenchmarks to plot the synthesis time against the pipeline complexity. First, as shown on the left, we present the time to synthesize 100 randomly generated operations on a pair of procedurally generated pipelines as a function of the program size, measured by the number of bits that the controller can manipulate. We see that the program starts to hit our 300 second timeout once we reach about 3,000 controller manipulable bits. However, we show that it is efficient on the standard program sizes shown here, for example, an L2 router, or all the way up to the size of an Ethernet frame. Second, shown on the right, network programs are classifier heavy, so we present the scaling of Avenir as the size of the classifier increases, which we measure as the number of 32-bit classifier variables that the controller can manipulate, holding constant the number of bits that the controller can write. Here, we see that we can scale to 232-bit variables before we start consistently meeting our timeout of 300 seconds. The key takeaways here are that Avenir seems to scale exponentially and is efficient on realistic program sizes. The caveat here 
is that these conclusions depend on the procedural generation scheme and on the heuristics that we developed. So we wanted to see how well Avenir works in a realistic scenario. To answer this question, we use data from a switch reboot load test used to benchmark Onos, which again is an open source industry grade controller platform. We used Avenir to translate 40,000 IPv6 routes expressed in the highest level API, flow objectives, to a P4 model of a Broadcom switch developed by the ONF and Google. Observe in the completion graph on the left that Avenir takes just under 12 minutes to translate these 40,000 insertions, and Onos completes its end-to-end -end benchmark in just about 15. Even though we don't know the exact overhead that Avenir would instill into Onos, the takeaway here is that Avenir and Onos complete on the same order of magnitude, so the expected overhead could be anywhere between 0 and just under 2x. Thanks for listening. For more details, see our paper, which describes how Avenir interposes between the data plane and the controller to enable automatic, verified, and efficient management of a diverse data plane. Thank you.